You must believe Calypso is the reason for all the violence. He is the The Twisted Metal reboot for the PlayStation 3 may be the worst game that I love. Released in February of 2012 for the PlayStation 3, Twisted Metal is the most recent and arguably most disappointing game in the series. Its lack of success is likely why Sony hasn't been interested in developing a new game. It took some major swings that just didn't pay off. But what is Twisted Metal without risk and reward? Was Twisted Metal so bad that it deserved to be the final nail in the coffin for Sony's longest running game franchise? To help us decide, I embarked on the toughest challenge the game can offer, unlocking Warthog. This requires completing every event in the story mode on the hardest difficulty and achieving gold medals on each one. Medals are awarded based on how long it takes to complete an event. There are gold, silver, and bronze medals to be earned. However, like an old dusty prospector heading out west in search of fortune, all we care about is that sweet, sweet gold. Immersing myself in the worst that Twisted Metal 2012 can offer will allow me to judge better what went wrong with this game. Most folks who have played this game and completed this challenge would likely use Juggernaut, the massive truck and trailer that acts as a mini-boss at different points in the campaign, and just call it a day. But I don't want this to be all footage of me driving some lumbering, overpowered behemoth across the various battlegrounds. That would be boring. So for an added challenge, I can only use Juggernaut three times throughout the game. Variety is the spice of life, and all that. Our adventure begins with Sweet Tooth's campaign. Sweet Tooth's whole motivation is that he's a serial killer clown who made an oopsie on one of his sprees and has to tie loose ends. Twisted Metal is his best shot at cleaning up his mess. Twisted Metal 2012 starts on familiar footing, with a simple deathmatch on the sun-soaked streets of Sun Springs, California. All I have to do is destroy every opponent without getting killed. I choose to be a shirtless clown on a motorcycle for this event, because the special weapon can annihilate anyone and anything with brutal efficiency. Dragging the chainsaw on the ground with a wheelie will 1. Look cool as hell, 2. Force it to catch on fire, and 3. Do enormous damage. The only catch is that it lacks homing and has a wind-up animation before it fires, making it extremely hard to land in the best circumstances, let alone when every car is obsessed with ramming into you at every possible moment. Reaper's frankly pitiful health pool means my margin of error is so small it could fit easily on the sharp end of a razor. It takes brass balls to hurl flaming chainsaws while only having double-digit hit points to work with. Using my patented ABC method, you'll be fine. A. Always. B. B. C. Chucking. Always be chucking. Freeze your target and give them the old ABC. And you'll find yourself heading to the next event with a gold medal in your pocket. Moving on to Black Rock Stadium, which is, in my humble opinion, the worst f***ing piece of sh level in the entire game. It's essentially a reimagining of the Moscow map from Twisted Metal 2, but they took everything to the dumbest possible extreme. I chose Outlaw, the police SWAT SUV that perfectly balances speed, armor, handling, and special weapon power. He's not nearly as good at wrecking baddies as Reaper, but not getting roasted instantly is a worthwhile trade-off if you ask me. Besides, his special is no slouch and is very forgiving to use. The game does the hard part for me. All I need to do is spam the fire button to shoot off extra grenades and missiles. It took more than a few tries and some fruitless experimentation with Reaper to finish the fight. Still, eventually, I did and napped our second gold medal. Twisted Metal 2012 is not content with keeping the same formula for the entire tournament. It's gotta shake things up. You've heard of Deathmatch, but have you heard of Electric Cage Deathmatch? Yeah didn't think so. It's like a regular deathmatch, but you must stay within a confined area that moves periodically. It's actually a neat way to spice up the standard action of Twisted Metal. My biggest gripe is that it only allows you to explore the map within the cage. Metro Square is a phenomenally designed arena that doesn't get much play during the single player campaign. Since I would be stuck in a small space with a bunch of raging assholes, I went with Darkseid for this event. This big rig racing machine is a superb brawler who loves to give enemies a little boop now and again. Easy. First try. What's next? Sweet Tooth's story continues, offering some backstory on a situation. I skipped the cutscene, so I don't know what happened. There's no gold medals for watching these movies, so what's the point? What's that? Do you want another change to the classic formula? We are faced with Juggernaut, a tottering giant who slowly patrols the map while pooping out new enemies. The longer you leave him to his own devices, the more enemies you have to face. It's imperative to take him down as quickly as possible. However, he doesn't appear on the radar or HUD on Twisted Difficulty, so you gotta find him the old old-fashioned way with your little peepers. Given that we are playing Sweet Tooth's story, it's only fair that I use his iconic
truck at least once. It also helps that his secondary special is to turn into a f***ing flying mech. Jumping into the friendly skies, I scan the map for signs of the juggernaut before pouncing on him like a hellish rain of fire, fury, and ice cream. I am the creamy apocalypse, the arbiter of tasty doom, the frostbitten destroyer of worlds. Fear me. Your eyes do not deceive you. This is really a race in Twisted Metal. It's a common misconception to assume that the vehicles in these games are meant to behave like actual cars, but they're not. They are fighting game characters cleverly disguised as cars. They move in strange and unnatural ways, because the pace of the game would grind to a halt if they had to abide by the actual laws of physics. This makes them extremely fun and satisfying to use in battle, but absolutely horrible to race with. Not only are the cars not built for racing, but the levels are especially ill-equipped for this event. The Developers tried to piece together a serviceable racing experience, but the whole thing stinks like a poorly executed, half-baked idea. In proper racing form, getting it over with as fast as humanly possible is our only option. Although I will admit, this race does seem more natural because it's just one long strip of road, but the other ones are egregious errors. Crimson Fury is the fastest vehicle in the game, so that's who I use. Down, back, boom, moving on. Our first boss battle. We have to face the monster truck duo comprised of Hammerhead and Slayer. These guys are unquestioned examples of game design brilliance compared to the other two boss fights. The game forces me to use Roadkill, most likely because they have so many bespoke animations for the gunner to perform throughout the fight that adding that to every car would have taken more time and effort than the developers could spare. Roadkill is fine, it has a decent special, pretty good speed, and undeniable style. Sweet Tooth being forced to use Roadkill is also a clever nod to the previous driver of the car. Marcus Kane, aka Sweet Tooth's alter ego. This fight takes place on a unique boss version of Sun Springs, California, where the sky has become a sinister blood red. The buildings that were once indestructible fortresses that no amount of twisted meddling could topple are now no match for the Brothers Grimm, smashing through them like a fucked up Kool-Aid man. Destroying one monster truck will cause the other to retreat into their little armored shell mode. The only way to continue damaging them is to drive underneath them and hold them there long enough for my gunner to climb into its belly. Once there, he'll plant the explosives and wait for me to pick him up, which I won't. You don't earn gold medals by wasting time picking up your allies from daycare. With the first campaign down, we are treated to the conclusion of Sweet Tooth's story. I skipped that cutscene too. I think Sweet Tooth got to eat all the candy and ice cream he wanted. Hopefully he brushed between snacks. Still, plenty of work to do. Grim enters the chat following Sweet Tooth's demise. I don't know what his story is. I think he's that dude with a two that'll ruin your weekend with his souped up hog. Greg that hog, brother, hell yeah. We pick it back up with another rousing match first Juggernaut, but now there's two. Diesel City is the venue, Kamikaze is the car. Neither Juggernaut will appear on the radar or HUD, so choosing a vehicle that can cover ground quickly is imperative. Kamikaze is a speed demon armed with a flamethrower that can shred the competition when combined with upgraded machine guns. Don't mind the anime girl design on the car, it's for performance. Um. The first juggernaut was spotted off the rip, and I made short work of him by latching myself to his rear end and pumping him full of hot flame goo. Before finding the next, I stocked up on valuable weapons to make the killing go faster, and faster it was. These fuckers barely have a chance to look at me before I evaporate their health bars. We've had it too easy for too long. These events are supposed to be complete bullshit, with the AI making a fool of me. So Twisted Metal 2012 drags us into a cruel slugfest on Grindhouse. It's a tight, compact arena against 10 opponents. There's nowhere to hide, the enemies are feverishly hunting me down, and I chose f***ing Reaper again like an idiot. The plan was to kill the baddies so fast that they couldn't possibly do their nonsense BS before they were sent to the Shadow Realm. Yeah, that didn't work out too well. And there's no question I'm gonna use the big fucker here. Juggernaut is massive and extremely powerful, but he's not exactly an automatic win cheat code. Being such an enormous target, he is a magnet for incoming fire, including the sniper reticle that certain enemies love to use. The ram damage by itself makes you nearly unstoppable. Swarming enemies are cast off into worlds unknown with the slightest of touches. We are subjected to the electric cage deathmatch for the second and final time. This addition brings us to the Thrills and Spills Adventure Park, another intricately detailed map that we don't get to explore freely. An entire wing of this level gets ignored by the electric cage, and unlike Metro Square, we don't even get to come back later in the campaign. 
This is the only time this arena is presented. I hopped into Meat Wagon, an old timey ambulance whose special weapon has some old geezer strapped to a gurney and launched at breakneck speeds. Despite being smaller, Meat Wagon has a ton of armor and is willing to sit and duke it out with the competition. This map is super generous with its weapons and health pickups. I can easily breeze by it, as long as I maintain some semblance of consciousness throughout the battle. Grim's middle cutscene is commandeered by the preacher, who spends the whole time yelling at the clouds. I spent longer on this f level than a Panic at the Disco song title. I have entire recording sessions dedicated to trying and failing miserably at this event. I tried desperately to beat this without resorting to Juggernaut. Watkins Harbor is not the problem, it's a fine map with a decent layout and ample pickups. The nature of the event is intolerable because of the twisted difficulty. As an endurance match, the maximum number of enemies will always be on the field. All I have to do is kill 10 of them, but when one explodes, another takes its place. The AI is so suffocating on this difficulty. You're always under total red alert siege. In other game modes, you can eventually whittle the opponents down over time. In endurance mode, they just keep spawning. There is no refuge from their wrath. There is no safe space to run. Juggernaut is our only hope. And even then, I still got walloped. Oh? You thought the races were done? This is only the second of three. And to top it off, there's a surprise at the end where you have to fight the top three racers. So picking a vehicle just because they're fast is not necessarily the best choice. You need to get a car you can also fight with. Naturally, I went with the anime girl car again. They're not as fast as Crimson Fury, but they can at least take a punch. The gates are haphazardly placed across Sun Springs, California, a map that is 100% not built to be a racetrack. Finishing the race quick enough to get to the fight at the end means you should have plenty of time to fuck these dudes up and nab that precious gold medal. This is what you have all been waiting for. The epitome of Twisted Metal 2012's worst problems. The Iron Maiden boss battle. Everything about this fight is the sad, wasted ambition squandered by poor game design. Every ounce of this fight event is frustration manifested in poorly optimized computer code. It happens in phases, each infuriating in its own way. The first requires you to tangle with a bunch of limos. The red one contains the faction leader, who must be collected when destroyed. Drag their lifeless body to the missile launcher and hold them there for way too f long. If you don't kill the other limos before doing this, they'll do everything they can to interrupt you. Once the nuke launcher is sufficiently satisfied, it gobbles up the faction leader and lets you fire off one of its missiles. You must guide the rocket into Iron Maiden, and she flies faster than your missile and constantly shoots at it. You have a shield, but using it depletes your fuel, so your best bet is to fly around her shots and hope you make it. Do this a second time, now with the missile launcher on the move, and you can start to actually hurt Iron Maiden. The amount of times I had to restart because of these limos is disgusting. These f***ers can somehow bully me out of the way no matter what vehicle I use. They hit like f***ing sledgehammers and exclusively use shotgun attacks. It was smoother sailing when I finally got to the proper boss fight. I stocked up on mega guns and just pummeled her from afar. During her later phases, she throws an electric cage around her that you have to stay within or else you explode. Of course, the cage is way too small. And she flies away faster than vermin can drive. So I died at least once because of that. Elsewise, Iron Maiden was no problem, just a big 10 minute long kick in the groin. I skipped Grimm's cutscene because I can't be bothered after enduring the Gale Force sewer pipe of bullshit that is Iron Maiden. I think he had to sword fight Sweet Tooth or something. The final campaign is here, back to Black Rock Stadium for another endurance match. My two least favorite things combined into one sh sandwich. Calypso has expanded the arena to include even more frustrating areas to explore. The spike room in the center is now active, and I spent a lot of time there, hoping the enemies strapped themselves and got crushed. I used Junkyard Dog, assuming he would be terrible. His special is finicky and barely works, but it's funny to look at. The saving grace of this arena is that the hazards are just as likely to knock off your foes as you are. The swinging wrecking balls, lava pit, and spike room will give me the helping hand that I need to claim victory and that gold medal. Outside of the boss battles, this event is easily the most challenging one. You are stuck in some dusty ass desert town with two beefed up juggernauts. And by the way, there is no garage, no health truck, and only two health pickups. I was dreading doing this event. Lesser folks have crumbled in the face of such insurmountable odds. I strapped into Outlaw and set out to swing the long dick of justice. I expected this event to take hours, even days to complete. But to my surprise, I cleared it on the first try, baby. 
baby. I snatched the mega guns and force fed them into Juggernaut's gaping butthole. Running over the drivers of downed enemies would grant me a health bonus, and that was the only reason I could outlast the opponents. Oh hey, another f endurance match. The game is trying hard to avoid falling into the monotony of having a series of standard death matches. Instead, it falls into an even dumber hole of making every contest an endurance match or juggernaut fight. A game released in 2012 should have more content than one released in, say, 2001 or 1996. So the devs felt beholden to shake up the formula, but this is not how it should be done. It's still a series of arcade-style events that rely solely on the gameplay mechanics to be interesting. There is no no narrative significance to any of these events. All they have is the gameplay. Slight variations in their formula is not enough to solve their problem. They would have been far better off going hard on the single pair story like Mortal Kombat or Jack X Combat Racing did. The core gameplay is unchanged, but the stakes and situations are woven into the levels and events. Twisted Metal 2012 just comes off as a lazy soup of poorly implemented ideas. The developers fully expected the multiplayer to be so dominant and outstanding that it would overshadow their lack of single player content. The gameplay is good enough to stand on its own, but they just didn't give the players enough reasons to play it. Anyway, this is the obligatory rooftop level that appears in every Twisted Metal game. My strategy was to camp out in the pool area and wait for the bad guys to come to me, where I could then give them some swimming lessons. Also, does anyone want to try to explain this f sniper here? There was no laser to be seen, yet Furman just flipped the switch on Dollface. Eventually, I made it through the gauntlet of bullshit with Sweet Tooth and moved on to our last actual deathmatch event. We see Dollface's middle cutscene. I skipped it. Savor this while you can, because the following two events are far removed from what Twisted Metal should be. This is the last bit of car combat that the single player campaign can offer. We head back to Metro Square and I'm taking no chances. I'm busting out Juggernaut for the third and final time. This event features the maximum amount of opponents, and according to Calypso, they are all being told to target me exclusively as if they weren't already. I'm gonna play this clip and you tell me if this makes any fucking sense. Vermin was not even in the same zip code as me, and still somehow snipe me. I don't blame anybody who says it's not worth unlocking Warthog. Juggernaut did Juggernaut things, and the competition fell at his many wheels. The first two races were just an appetizer for the full course of bullshit that is the Diesel City race. The game has abandoned the weird out of place checkpoint poles in favor of these giant Calypso things. This race requires you to contend with car parkour, as you must jump across various buildings, and a single fuck up leads to a restart. I picked Crimson Fury for their speed and nothing else. Just get this over with as fast as possible. Nothing about this race is fun. Finally, we made it. If we can beat this fast enough, we unlock Warthog. The only thing standing between us and glory is a hulking, carnival-themed monstrosity that is home to more stinking bullshit than a cattle ranch fueled by beefaroni laxatives. Shadow is my go-to as their alternate special makes quick work of the first hurdle, the clown head that acts as an elevator taking us to the next level. Shooting this clown head is the only time I have to shoot anything as my chosen vehicle. The following section has me playing pinball with a bunch of Wish.com sweet tooths, escorting the one with a big cartoon bomb into the giant clown head will open the obstacle course where all fun goes to perish. Taking my time on the obstacle course is surprisingly effective. There's no need to rush. These hazards are trash tier hot dog water filtered through David Jaffe's jock strap. Expertly timing my approach through each one is the only way. Next, we climb aboard Talon to do the jankiest piece of shit task in the entire game. To wreck this towering circus, you have to disable the flying sweet bots and airmail their hus into the glowing hole of another clown head. Five times. And probably more because it barely works. We see the ending of Dollface's story, and I skipped it. I'm exhausted with this game. I think she missed her flight or something. Anyway, that's how I beat Twisted Metal 2012 on the hardest difficulty and earned gold medals in every event. That's how I unlocked Warthog. This game is fun, but only if you avoid Twisted Difficulty. Just play the game on normal and you'll be fine. Anyway, I hope you can find the people, things, and activities around you that make you happy, healthy, and kind. Your darkest moments don't define you, and there's always a tomorrow. I'll catch you next time. Have a nice day.